Look at this. No lava hounds necessary. He's just gonna protect the blimp and all of these balloons. Double rage pops the freezes. And he'll swarm that entire area of the base there with just blooms. Today is the final round of the qualifiers for the next golden ticket to the Clash of Clans World Championship. This is Rush of Clans. There's going to be two open qualifiers, and each of those open qualifiers is going to send eight different teams into the Swiss stages. Then they'll play through a Swiss stage, which will send them into the playoff stage, and then the winner of that gets a golden ticket to the Clash of Clans World Championship and will get a chance to go join Navi. We are going to be tracking all eight of the different boards today, but the focus is going to be Leminskit versus Tribe Gaming. That yeah, make his way in for the open attack here. He's got his queen going right into the defensive scavenger shot, into the defensive road champion. Down south, he has his king wrapping around the bottom of the base here. And I don't think that king's going to have enough punch to actually secure the town hall takedown down there. So we have a plan on standby to make sure he goes in after the town hall. Maybe the king goes that far. No, maybe not. Okay, the queen is actually going to go that direction, though. Queen did not go inside of that compartment that she wall broke into, so he's gonna have to change the plan of the fly. He wall breaks down south. Oh, another wall break to get more direct access into that single inferno. He's gotta get that single inferno down before he switches over to the town hall itself. But the queen can't take the town hall from where she's at. He gets another wall break that could send her north, though. Up top, playing for your troops, able to come out and assist with clearing everything around that eagle artillery, but not the eagle artillery itself. Back runner. The shot down up there. Queen goes to the single Ferno first. Very, very good sign. But I don't know if the Queen did to go to the Town Hall yet. And she's turning north. How far north does she go? He's not going to go to the Town Hall, though. But he will put the Lalo through the Town Hall. And that's perfectly okay. That was probably the original plan. Anyways, as long as the Queen can cooperate from here. However, the Queen probably was in charge of getting the artillery and that multi Ferno down. And now our healers are in danger. They, uh... Not strong here, but the Queen <laughs> definitely trying to throw on this one. Yeah, let's transfer, though. They move over to the World Champion. that give him a really solid chance to still pull through. He's got that extra poison. He can use it on ground skellies, and he really should right now. But it looks like Electric Owl is able to burn through a lot of these ground skellies very quickly. The World Champion, you'd have to pick up everything else here because all of the balloons are now gone. 30 seconds to close it out if they want to start off with a triple against Tribe Game in this match. Champion circling off to the left here. More minions over to the left side as well. Try to clean up as quickly as he can. But still, taking those Eagle Artillery Strikes all the way to the end. It was too much damage for way too long. The Warden will step in and keep on striking away here. And he'll get it into the 90s. Still very respectable considering that the Queen did not stay in the base here. And he still gets it up to a pretty solid percentage. I just realized there's a giant button in the middle of the screen. <laughs> How did I miss that on the previous one? Um, let's, let's, let's fix that, right? <laughs> okay, there we go. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> All right. Boja is live for Leminskit and Tribe Gaming's first attack is in at the same time. Now, let's keep in mind here as they play through today that they're only in 30-minute wars. Not our typical 45-minute esports style wars. And that means we're going to see some overlap. We're going to have to bounce around just a little bit. But Boja making his way in with Super Miners and Hog Riders. Lots of Black Air Bombs on this entry, but able to survive through it. He is able to find two of the Black Air Bombs with the Coco Loons, but one of them slips through and hits his heel. There's the Goblins over the right side of the base there, the Queen. CC pull nice and early. That is very, very, very close to going to ability right now. Needs to be very careful. That expo on the side there. Continuing to dish out damage. You got the queen down. He is starting to recover HP. No, he goes to ability. Take it back. Boja is in a little bit of trouble now. Important to this match. All the people that are here to watch this live. I'm sure there's a lot of pressure here. For Bodia, but he is definitely proven to be one of the players that can handle that kind of pressure. He goes out and uses that invisibility, circles in the town hall, giant bomb goes off. Queen's healers might be a little bit close right now, but he freezes the town hall, stops that invisible tower from going off, and continues on, but not for long. The queen goes down, and here comes the hybrid. Now the hybrid is a struggle to get through the space here. 
without the queen supporting so let's quickly bounce over let's go see what tribe gave it is doing on their attack here you have yo yo 23 live on the other side this attack is a lalo looks like he just now has the queen reaches the core of the base there. She arrives to the core of the base. They're nice and healthy. She actually had to do multiple wall fights to get into the core of the base. There was a play player working on the left side. Lalo sweeps in on the right side. And it looks like he did end up having his king by the looks of it secure the town hall. Our champion supports the Lalo. Queen picks up the multi inferno. RC ability still attacked here. Guys, this is a triple. Let's head back over the hybrid. Nicely done. Tribe Gaming. Definitely the favorite in that match here. We want to. See them make it back to the world championship though. We'd love to see what they can do after they came in second place in the last world championship. And they would be one of the favorites to get into that competition and win this next golden ticket. But let's see if they can keep their lead now because it looks like Bogia did indeed fall short. This one will go all the way up to it looks like an 86%. Now Tribe sends in Nibrox for their second attack. The only format that they have as far as attack timing for these 30 minute wars is they have to have at least two attacks done by the 15 minute mark. They could pile them up however they want to outside of that. But we'll see how it all plays out here. Let's get a bit chaotic at the end, but Nibrox able to send in this super minion blimp. Need to secure the town hall. Gonna want to reach backwards and pick up this scatter shop, but he also wants to pick up at least one multi and the monolith. And right in that area, then that monolith is a very, very high value target. We'll pick up the sweeper. Actually, gets a couple of the super archers to split off and get some damage all the way over at the left side at multi inferno. We'll start his heroes now. Not gonna wait for it to get healed back up here, or at least get the battle builder down and stop. If from healing up further, but he does have the CC that's pulled up the top of the base there. The model did not go down. So he did get some good value. But he also missed a couple of potential key targets. He may be able to work with this time. I think there's still enough value that he is going to get the most important one with the heroes there. Getting that multi for another way. And he will have the ward ability still to help him get through the... Raged up Eagle Artillery with the Multi-Inferno there. However, he's not going to have any spell support when he moves in there. The Queen able to dodge those Eagle Artillery strikes there as he continues to target the Electro Titan. He will have a couple of Teslas pop on this left side. More Teslas are popping now. Drops in more balloons. Going to swarm that air of Tesla. Starts in the Warden now. Now, one of the tricky parts of this attack here is keeping an eye on two ground Expos here. He will need to delay his ward ability on the initial approach of the base so that he can make sure that he gets headhunters that can cross all the way through the base and arrive to the back end defensive queen. There's the ward ability. But his headhunters are going off to the king right now, which means his world champion has to get in there and take ground. No, actually, look at that. A couple of them cross through. They are able to take ground, even with the raised up ground expos. Raged up multi inferno doing a lot of damage here. Not looking too hot here for Nebrox. He needs to get this multi down and still have enough afterwards to get past the defensive king, which he did not make it through with his own king. Bean didn't survive either. And look at that, guys. It's going to be a defense. So he can gather up a little bit more percentage here with his last couple of blooms. He'll pick up the air defense, grab out the archer tower, clear out this right-hand corner, and climb this percentage up. But he's going to leave a couple defenses. There's nothing he can do about it. So, this one will go into the 80s. But with a 92 out of Leminska and an 86, it doesn't leave them very far behind. And depending on what happens with the next attacks here from Tribe, we could very, very easily see a swing of this war. Now, let's go check out the big boards and let's go check out all of the teams that have arrived into this last 16. Remember, eight of them move on to the... Swiss stages. Once we get eight teams from each qualifier, they fight out in the Swiss stages. And then in the playoffs, we decide who gets the golden ticket and that $50,000 prize pool. And obviously, the team who makes it through will join Navi in the World Championship. And speaking of Navi, they were playing just for prize money, not for a golden ticket. And the team that ended up knocking them out of the qualifier here is the newly signed United Gaming. Moses will now go in for the third attack for Leminskit. He will use the lightning and use it to set a funnel here, combined with the word walk to set up an Electro Titan smash attack. 
Little side of the base here, big dragon and a couple blues going to pick up the arch towers and the cannon. The missing the cannon and the missing all the archer towers. Okay, a lot of investment right there. And all he claimed out of it was two trash buildings. Not ideal, but at least it gets the funnel form for the king. Not reducing the damage on him as he works to the outside of the base here, but at least he'll be able to get in there and get some quick strikes and get those archer towers off of his back and make his way into the base here. He does, however, go directly into the scatter shot. That might be okay. He might be able to work with that. Let's finish off this wizard tower to the right side of the base. He can need to go follow the main pack here. She looks like she will. And everybody else will continue through to the middle of the base. So the king is kind of forcing them off to the right, which is actually a good thing right now. I would say because if the queen stays off to the right initially, then she doesn't have a chance to end on the right side. But he has an opportunity for her to loop around, which is maybe a good thing. Maybe a bad, I don't know. That might be a bad thing if she ends up wandering off backwards into the corner she just came out of. She's staying with the pack here. Is unfortunately are pulled into the Town Hall Poison. He does have the Board Ability active, trying to protect them. Keep an eye on those healers there. The Town Hall Poison taking away very, very hard here. He's got the Hog Riders that came out of the Siege Bricks, wrapped around the bottom base there. There goes all of his healers. And into the backside of the base here, no healer support. He has Lush Titan still alive here. The Queen not able to get through the defense of Roar Champion before she goes down, but his Roar Champion has a lot of tanking out in front of her. He does get the engagement of the defensive Roar Champion. He's got Ground Skellies right there, but he freezes the Ground Skellies, and so they're never able to step forward into the Lecture Titan aura, so Roar Champion is distracted now. And yeah, they finally do go in, and they will continue to tank for her. He's got a little bit of time to follow this Roar Champion, but this boat was the most important of those defenses. It does get raged up now. Roar Champion still working, but very low HP, and she's gone. This is a defense. The racket into the low 80s. But that's all he's gonna get out of this. It'll be an 82% and Leminskit needs to do something special now. Here we go. It is over to the side here. Tribe with one trip on the board will send in a star player. It will be Kronos. And he will be using a queen charge into hog riders. Trying to hog riders in this one here. Maintain the lead. You can go two stars ahead here. They could definitely put Leminskin on the ropes here. So Leminskin will be praying for a defense here. If they can get it, then you can still threaten Drive Gaming's qualification position. A lot of Hog Rider sneaks in there, picks up the air defense. Perfectly calculated on that. Flame Flinger will continue north on the base here. Need some support as he goes into the the multi mortar right there. So behind that, behind that flame flinger, see if you can keep it safe. Queen is able to get that invisibility as she steps in the town hall. Rage gets enough damage output to take it down there before that invisible tower can come out of the freeze and get triggered. The live attack. Like said there's going to be a lot of overlap here, especially towards the end of the war. They are spreading out there pretty nicely for us, though. They're, they're being nice to the spectators. We appreciate it. Up top there, the Flame Flinger still outranging that multi-mortar. Queen. And to uh, get past this Lava Hound and get into this Monolith. And with that Rage and the Freeze on the Monolith, he's able to recover the Queen's HP. The King taking the Eagle Artillery Strikes down south. He does end up having a Tesla draw out at the top of the base there. Flame Flinger does get targeted. He puts in a couple balloons. But he can take the mortar damage. He'll get the Tesla's as a nice extra bonus. But he does put in some... Rocket Blues and a Dragon Rider on the Flame Flinger, and he does end up taking that scatter shot down. Up here, we've got the Hog Riders. In the Rage Tower. Queen still doing good work down south. King engages the defensive Queen first, which is kind of throwing off his head on us right now. They're trying to path through, but they have a lot longer path to go through. They still arrive to the defensive Queen, and they're able to take her down, but he lost every single one of these Hog Riders across the top of the base here. Well, the is still moving. At least got the defensive king out of the way up there, so the Roar Champion not going to run into any problems with that. The queen able to pick up the defensive Roar Champion now. Absorbing the Eagle Arch to the strikes there, giving this, this Roar Champion a chance to pull through. And she can handle these multi infernos She can handle it better than any other troop on the board here. Jumping the walls and dealing with that, that splash damage. Not really affecting her too heavily, but the queen still moving with 30 seconds to go. Looks like defenses are going to go down here. Let's beat the clock. 
One wizard down south is going to make its way in and go pick up this defensive queen pad. His queen circles all the way up to the top of base here. World Champion is going to get that multi-inferno right as one healer as all the survives for the queen. But it looks like with that wizard stepping in, it is a triple. Kronos gets it done. He has definitely been extremely consistent and he is very valuable on the team. But Rikiris is in at the same time and it realized he was still alive or really not alive at all. <laughs> it looks like he's two minutes in and it looks like he has his world champion going after the Eagle Artillery now. Strong law low in progress here. Champion ability still attacked. This is looking good. Oh man. Tribe's good. Tribe's golden. Tribe's golden. <laughs> uh, he's got this under control. The defensive queen goes down. The blues is swarming and the RC ability sweeps out the last few defenses on the backside. Baby Dragon even comes down to just make it even more sure that Tribe Gaming is going to end up pulling through here. So, with that, we're looking at three triples on the board for Tribe, and they got him on the ropes. Tribe Gaming, the favorite of this match, the favorite to win the golden ticket, are gonna pull through here, and they just got one more attack that they gotta not throw on. Excosis will now go in and try to push Tribe Gaming up to a commanding 14 star victory. We will be doing a queen charge into Lalo with a mix of rocket blooms here. Now, I said Lalo. I said Lalo by habit, though. There are no lava hounds in this. Excosis is trying to do a Lalo attack, but. It's using rock up blues instead of lava hounds. I don't know how this is gonna work, but I guess we'll see. <laughs> you, you don't expect a team to break out a creative attack there in this kind of a situation with this much on the line, with their qualification up for grabs. Excosis sends in this Lalo with no lava hounds and instead replaces them with rock up blues. And we'll see what we can do with it. The queen able to get a lot of value across the top of the base there. Got the eagle artillery down. Able to pick up the scatter shot. He has a path for the queen to round past the scatter shot and or see past the eagle artillery area and into where the scatter shot is down the line. And she he's gonna cut off that path in with the ball break rather than rounding it like a farm. She definitely would have rounded in. But it looks like he'll now start in rocket balloons at the bottom of the base here. Trying to put this air to the right side. I'm missing it. Look at this. No lava hounds necessary. He's just gonna protect the blimp and all of these balloons. Double rage pops the freezes, and he'll swarm that entire area of the base there with just balloons. Trying to set up his Roar Champion. Here we go, Roar Champion from the right side of the base. Queen continues onto the monolith. He has the freeze, lock it down. He has the skeleton spell to build up in the area and provide distraction. There's another world champion to cover the she needs. The warden has joined with the world champion. Go ahead and pop that RC ability. The queen took the first strike there. The diggy will get the stun. And the queen will circle around and join this world champion in that compartment. Guys, this is crushed. That was very nice. <laughs> the, 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 it's just a blue dive. It was rock to set funnels and blues to dive in there and take it out and with that tribe gaming is our first team to qualify for the swiss stages in rush of clans qualifier number one lots of scores are rolling in right now class champs claims bracket one chas mac gaming claims bracket two tribe gaming claims bracket three imperium titans gets the perfect war and we'll claim bracket four. Looking across the bottom of the boards here, we see Chasmac EA knocks out HTM. United Gaming actually wins it on percentage above X team. So uh, Gaming flexing that spot there after taking down the other golden ticket holder, taking out Navi in the previous rounds. And there's our final two spots. Prophecy Esports takes one of them and a second Imperium Titan squad takes the other. So we have our 18s. We need to send another eight through the next qualifier. And then we move on to Swiss stages and we continue to play for this golden ticket to the Clash of Clans World Championship.